Hey guys, my name is Joe Blessley Cox. I am an American, 31 years old, and I'm an English teacher. I've been teaching English for the past 10 years now and tutoring for the past 12. I tutor from time to time as well. Not, there's a difference, you guys. So <laughs> I've been doing it for 12 years. I've been teaching officially for the past 10 years. And what I really love really about teaching is actually seeing a student learn and grow and really seeing how the student understands English. Another thing I really learned about, I really love about teaching is actually learning from the student and the student learning from me as well. Cultural exchange, things like this, I've taught in, jo in Jordan and Turkey and in Mexico. So I've loved this cultural exchange that I've had with students. The students could be kids or they could be business people. I love learning about their culture, learning about them and learning why they actually want to learn English, not really what like um their job wants them to learn or what um, maybe their parents want them to learn or anything like that. I want to learn what do they see as the reason that they actually want to learn English and what they really get out of learning it. So now I wanna go on to the next question because it's not easy to remember all of them. So the next question that you have for me is, what is challenging about being a teacher? The biggest challenge sometimes is the cultural differences, um, but I get through it pretty easily. Um, biggest challenge can be maybe there could be a language barrier if the student doesn't speak English or the student speaks a language that I totally don't know. I also teach Chinese students and I've taught Uyghur students who are also Chinese before. Um, I can speak Turkish, but Uyghur is a little bit different. I don't speak any Chinese at all. Um, and when it comes to students who speak Spanish, I can understand them for the most part. But if like if it's too fast or they say something, I might not really get like um, something that might be a little bit double sense or a double entendre or something like this. I'm not going to get it. So honestly, I won't get it if they say something like that. Um, another challenge could be also... Um, Maybe some students who might be um, bored in the class or don't like the class, dealing with them and knowing the right way to deal with them, at the beginning, it can be a challenge. After 10 years, I've gotten used to dealing with that and knowing what to do, exactly what to do. Online, that can be a little bit of a challenge though. So let me go to the next question that you have here. So what do you think is challenging about learning a new language? I definitely know the answer to this. So what's really challenging about learning a new language is sometimes the speed of the speaker. You don't really understand what the person is saying if they speak too fast, honestly. Remembering vocabulary. This could be a challenge. Sometimes it's more something in your head. Maybe you think that you don't know the word or you're stuck between two or three different words. That can definitely be a challenge. Getting yourself, getting your mind out of your own language and thinking in that other language is definitely a challenge. So even when I teach my classes, I try making sure that the students are immersed in English. They learn the vocabulary that they, that they need in order to know the language, know the task, get through the task, and something that can actually help them in daily life so that they can actually speak to regular people in English, not just use it for when they're in school or at work. All right, let me go to the next one. <clears throat> so... Can you tell us about a time you made a mistake with a student? Well, the mistake that usually happens is that I think the student might be wrong about something and the student's right. That's why it's always important to learn from students. Take your time, learn from them, don't rush, um, and make sure that they're comfortable in the classroom and that they can actually, from time to time, interrupt you and um, say what they think or what maybe they remember something that you don't or maybe they know something that you don't. I know when I was teaching English and history class, when I was teaching uh, history and English in Mexico, world history and English, um, I had this student named Yudit who would interrupt sometimes and bring up different things about historical events that were not in the book that even I knew before I didn't know at all. And I would just, at some point, I was just like, you know what, you Yudit, you're a really good at I kind of just like, I sometimes I encouraged her to do it because she wasn't a bad student. She knew when to interrupt and say, oh, teacher is da 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 da, blah, 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 blah. And I was totally fine with that. 
we all learn from her, honestly, because sometimes the book said things that were wrong about Mexican history. So, of course, I encourage that from time to time. But it can be a challenge if you are you don't want to tell the student, no, you're wrong. Because sometimes the student is not wrong. At least if you say that, you should apologize and say, you know what, you're right. You're right. Good job. And re reward the student for being right. But don't make it like a habit of the students always interrupting the class. Okay, so next, what is your perspective on error correction in the classroom? So when it comes to error correction with grammar and different things like that, one thing I do if the student makes a mistake, I try to correct it right away or I wait for the student to finish. If the student has a harder time speaking, I wait for that student to finish saying what he or she is saying. And then I tell the student, say it this way. And I have the student repeat it that way or when it comes to written assignments, I point out what the what's wrong and I write the correction there using, well, you know, how to, helping them to pretty much edit the paper if they have like a homework assignment or something like that. When it comes to grammatical mistakes that they might say like off the cuff, I want to be able to um, fix those sort of right away. I don't want to just jump in and interrupt their story or whatever they're saying, but I want to be able to say, hey, Lalo, it's say this and have him correct himself or have her correct herself. All right, next. Um, what could you do if a student seemed nervous or untalkative? When the student seems nervous, I try to make sure the student feels comfortable. I ask the student what he or she likes. I try to incorporate these things in the class so that the student feels like the class is fun. No one wants to be in a boring class or to feel like they are the worst speaker or the worst in English in the class. So I try to give that student something that brings that student out of his or her shell so that the student talks more, tries harder, wants to learn. You don't want to just leave somebody behind like that. So next, uh, let's see. Is, a comp is company culture important to you? Why or why not? Company culture is important, but um, it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is actually getting the lessons done, making sure the students understand. Um, having colleagues that are helpful, of course, is important because um, being able to get information from colleagues like uh, background information about the students, um, being included in certain things that the school is doing, that's always important. You don't want to be left out in what other colleagues are doing, or you don't want the culture to be so um, dry and boring that you don't find it to be interesting. Um, working online is not a big issue, but if you're there at the school, of course, you want, you want there to be a good um, And last but not least, what do you want to know more about um, craving English. I just want to know like a lot more about the curriculum and things like this, how lessons are taught online or in person, different things like this, the basic things. Nothing mm -hmm. extravagant. <laughs> so anyway, that's me. I've answered the interview questions. You've gotten to know a little bit about me and my personality. I really do work a lot. <laughs> Maybe I look a little bit tired, but um, and I kind of said the wrong video before, but I'm glad to get to talk to you guys, get to let you know who I am, and I hope to hear from you soon. Take care. Bye.